life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And welcome to our July wrap-up. All the books we read in July. Woot. And we did a good amount of reading this month. We did a lot of reading this month, yes. yes. This month, I was kind of like catching the trail end of the space comics that Corey and I were doing for our Spinner Rack Kids episode, and that, I believe, has already posted. Mm -hmm. And we also had the stuff for Fantasy, which is going to be a magic-based one. So we had a whole bunch of comics from that. So all in all, I did like 31 books. Wow. And that's like 6,810 pages. Wow. This is my best this whole year. Although next month, I am not intending to do a huge amount of reading. I'm intending to do primarily audiobooks because I have a massive project going on. Mm hmm True. But what about you? So this month, I decided to break into my childhood books, and I actually read quite a few graphic novels as well, Ooh. which we'll talk about later. But I did end up reading 23 books this month, Ooh. which if you're following my pattern is exactly my goal uh, because I do either 13, 17, or 23. So yes, 23 books this month. And as such, I read 6,020 pages. So Marshall beat me in both books and pages for the month. But again, we say this is not a competition. Not a competition. It's a personal thing. But I like to celebrate when you I, read more than me because that's actually... I, I, yeah, that's very rare. <laughs> right? Because I'm typically like, I'm not in a position to do a huge amount of reading, typically. So I would like to say that for me personally, last month I did surpass... Or no, I was about to surpass my Goodreads goal. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have now surpassed it. I'm at 125 books for the year, which is exciting. And that gives me a grand total of 41,000. 935 pages for the year. I am at level 26. I had a Goodreads goal of 104 pages. That would be, you know... You mean two, books? Yeah, 104 books. Uh, <laughs> 104 pages, I 104 think pages. Passed. I finished that a long time ago. <laughs> um, but I have now gotten 109 books, which is great, because I still have a little under half a year to go, mm -hmm. so we can see where I can actually get to with this now. And my total pages for the year, 27,952, bring me up to level 22. I, I only went up one level this month, despite all the reading, and that gives me sad face. Oh. That gives me sad face. I was like, <laughs> at least give me two levels. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let's talk about our stats. Okay. So far as for my books, I had uh, I had a weird half star thing going on this month. I yeah. do not believe in half stars. That's just not my thing. So you you, you are a Goodreads reader, and I am a story graph reader. If you don't know the difference, Goodreads only lets you do whole star amounts, but story graph lets you do whole 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. So <laughs> I am more of a story graph reader now. Five star books. I have three of those. I have two 4.5 stars, 13 four stars, four that were 3.5. I have one two star, which I haven't had in a really long time. Mm. And I only DNF'd five books this month, which for me, being kind of a chaotic mood reader, is very good, actually. And, and I will say one of those books that I DNF'd, I DNF'd the audio, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to read it physically because I just couldn't get on board with the audio, but I liked mm. the story. So I'm probably going to go back and read it. Physically. In either ebook or physical. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I had six five stars, 18 four stars, five three stars, and two two stars. I did not DNF any, although one of them I considered it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably get there, although it is one of the comics. Right. Okay. My other stats that I do, I got 11 adult books and 12 that were young adult middle grade books. 11 of those were horror, one fantasy, two contemporary romance, and nine graphic novels. 
there were three audio books, three physical books, and 18 ebooks. Now you're doing the math and you're saying, but Lainey, that's 24. Well, one of them I actually listened to and read at the same time. So uh -huh. that's why it's 24 of those and not 23. I did purchase one of these books for myself, but five of them I got from NetGalley, one of them I got from Libro, three from the library, one for review from an independent author, and I do have like this challenge that I'm doing every month where I'm trying to read as many book of the month books as I can, and so I read three of the book of the month books, which was great. But I also DNF'd two of them, so technically I got through five. <laughs> I had five audiobooks, six physical books, and then, since we're doing another comic book episode coming up soon, 20 comic books. Wow. That's 20 graphic novels, and yeah, when I do a graphic novel, it's typically going to have to be over 130 pages for mm -hmm. me to consider it as a full book. Right. That's one of my cutoffs. Six of these stories were science fiction, 18 were fantasy, three are mystery books, two are thrillers, one horror, and then one other. So let's talk about the book. What was your two-star book? Well, actually, my two-star book was one I read just last night because I really wanted to push to get that 23rd book in there. Even though we are recording this before July is over, I wanted to have that 23rd book before we recorded this. And so I read it in an evening, and it is The Guilt Trip by Sandy Jones. I really disliked this book. I almost DNF'd it, but I didn't because I was like, you know what? No, I need this book. <laughs> so I did it. It is the story of these six couples who are going to Portugal for a destination wedding. One of those couples is the one getting married. And there's all these secrets and lies and it builds itself as a thriller and it's not a thriller. It's kind of a mystery, but it's not. It's just all these lies and secrets and stuff. And honestly, the thriller part didn't happen until the end. Mm. And then they, she throws in this epilogue that was like more confusing than anything else. And I had to read it three times because I was like, what is she trying to say here? Did not enjoy. Mm. So, yeah. My two two-star books, one of them is off of my shelf of physical TBR that I've had forever and I've never actually gotten to. It is Doctor Who, The Secret Lives of Monsters. And I thought I was really going to enjoy this, but it basically ends up being a load of filler of stuff that you kind of already knew mm -hmm. written in a weird way and then behind the scenes of how they did all the special effects for the monsters in Doctor Who. All in all, I didn't really enjoy it all that much. Doctor Fate Volume 2 was our other two-star and it's really a victim of its age. Its storyline just mm, didn't do it for me. It felt like Anne Rice and Indiana Jones went to a Buddhist monastery and got whacked in the face with a wizard stick. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they had no idea where they were going with this, and none of the directions were good. Wow. I don't have any three-star reads. Do you have three? Oh, I've got quite a bit of three-star reads. I have 3.5, so let's go with your threes. Okay. So one of them that I did was the Imperial Handbook. I kind of already talked about it a little bit. It's one of those Star Wars in-universe lore books. It's about the Empire. It was kind of fun. Could have been better. Dr. Fate number one. This one was a product of its time. I read Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel the Hellmouth, and... Courtney Crumrin and the Night Things. And those comics are all things that I'll be talking about in the Spinner Rack Kids episode. But yeah, they were all three star reads for me. So for my 3.5 stars, I have four of them. The first one is number eight in the Curvy Girls series. It's called Curvy Girls Can't Date Soldiers. So this is by Kelsey Stelting. I liked the story. Each of the curvy girls, not only are they curvy, but there's also something unique about them. And in this case, she has vitiligo. Do you know what that is? No. It's when you have your pigmentation in your skin is like, for example, if you're a person of color, it could be white oh, yeah. pigmentation okay. in different spots. It's really unique and fun, but she is not confident in her skin or the fact that she's curvy or the fact that she's a mathlete and she's smart. She gets bullied a lot. 
So she starts this email writing project that her mom sets up through the ROTC at the college that's in their area. She's a senior in high school. And she starts talking to the soldier. And she sends the soldier a picture of someone else because Mm -hmm. she doesn't like the way she looks. I had an issue with this book because of that point. I understand Mm -hmm. why it was done that way, but I don't really like it because I feel like it's kind of like catfishing in a way. Yeah. So I got really frustrated with this book, but I was like, okay, I'm going to read it. Now, later on, it gets better, but just that main fact of of the basis of this book for a heroine you're supposed to like really turned me off. Mm-hmm. So that's why I gave it 3.5. Now, one thing is, I saw this on your Goodreads screen while you were doing things, but it couldn't show the whole title. Uh-huh. So it cut it off part way. And for a moment, I had thought it said, Curvy Girls Can't Die. Uh And I'm like, that sounds like an excellent thriller title. (laughs) We'll write that one later. (laughs) Another book I read for 3.5 was Dark Roads by Chevy Stevens. This was highly anticipated by a lot of people, but I had never read any Chevy Stevens before. The basic premise of this book is that there's this highway in this small town where girls go missing. Like, they are walking along, they don't know why. It could be a hitchhike, hitchhiking situation, maybe a trucker picks them up, they don't know. Then they, um, some of them wind up dead, some of them are disappeared. So the, the first part of the book you're following a girl whose dad is a cop. He is very mentally abusive to her. It's actually her stepdad, not her dad. And so she decides she's going to disappear herself in the manner of oh, okay. these other people who are being disappeared, right? And the second half of the book is actually the sister of a girl who has turned up dead. And so she is going to find out what happened to her sister and kind of gets all caught up into what is happening. I felt like this book was just kind of okay. I I didn't feel like it was very, like, suspenseful, no thriller stuff, whatever. There were a couple parts where I was like, what what are you people doing? I don't understand. But I think as writing, it was very good. It was just the storyline itself that did not connect to me. Next, I read Arsenic and Adobo. This is by Mia P. Manasala. I'm going to give you a caveat. When I first finished reading this book, I gave it 3.5 stars. But as I started thinking about it a little more, I'm bumping it up to four, kind of. Okay. Because it's not, it, it's a type of book that I used to love reading, but now since I'm on the thriller and horror, I don't read as much. And I think I kind of felt like it was lackluster, but it stuck with me. And I really liked the premise of it, so I'm bumping it. It is the story of a a girl who goes to work in this restaurant of her relatives. Her ex comes in, gets poisoned, and dies. And so they are shutting down the restaurant. And it is the first in a series, too, which makes me very happy. But, like, there's a lot of Filipino culture in this book, which was so interesting and fun. And, like, the food descriptions was just great and it is a murder mystery it's kind of like those cozy mysteries that you yeah i used to love reading but i think more and more i think about it i'm definitely going to reread this book and i am going to pick up the second one when it comes out it was great great. And the last 3.5 star is One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. And since reading this book, we have found out that it is coming out, I believe, on Peacock as a series. So I'm excited for that, even though I gave the book kind of a medium grade. I really wanted to read this book after I read The Cousins earlier in the month. So I got it from my library. It's almost like The Breakfast Club at the very beginning of the book. Five kids go to detention. One of this one of them dies. All right. So there's like a very short list of suspects. And so the whole book is about them trying to figure out what happened. And the guy who dies has an app that's kind of like, it's kind of like Gossip Girl. I would say that this is kind of like Breakfast Club meets Gossip Girl because he does these like gossip bits without naming names. And so they think that the person who killed him had something to hide that they didn't want to get out. I thought it was, it was fun, but I don't think I liked it as much as the cousins okay that then brings us to four stars Uh, okay so i'm just gonna get out the list of comics that i did there are four stars all in a batch here we have chew taster's choice hal jordan and the green lantern core volume one uh, 
Strange Academy, First Class, Mystic U, The Magicians, The New Class, Justice League Dark, The Last Age of Magic, The Magic Order, Fables, Legends in Exile, Fables, Animal Farm, Fables, Storybook Love, Dresden Files, Welcome to the Jungle, Spider-Man Blue, and the Dresden Files Dogmen. And you're saying they can hear what you think about that in our Spinner Rat Kids podcast? Uh, you totally can. Awesome. Uh, with the exception of the Spider-Man Blue and Choose Taster's Choice, because those were not, they, they weren't magic based. Mm-hmm. Choose Taster's Choice was the story of a detective who has the power to see the history of any object he eats. So this is going to get gross. So it's like iZombie. It's like iZombie, yes. Uh, He's using it to solve crimes. And this is specifically in a world where, for some reason, chicken is illegal. Okay. Yeah. Spider-Man Blue is the story of Spider-Man moving out of Aunt May's house and into his best friend's apartment. They're sharing an apartment together, and he's kind of stuck in this love triangle between Mary Jane, him, and Gwen Stacy. And this all kind of happens just before she dies. Who? Uh, Gwen Stacy. Okay. And he is recording something on, he's recording his feelings of what happened on audio after he has married Mary Jane. Mm. Why is Uh, he blue? Well, because she died. Okay, so he's not actually the color blue. No, he's he not color blue. blue. He's feeling blue. Gotcha. Because uh, he's remembering her. Right. And that's all of the, the comics that okay. I'll be talking about. But we have some books in here that I think you and I both listen to. The Drowning Kind. Yes, I have listened to The Drowning Kind previously. I'm very interested to see what you think about this book. It's a horror book. It's definitely a horror book. Mm-hmm. And very quickly, I started getting this feeling of Lovecraftian horror, right. things from another dimension kind so of thing. So if you want to have a little short synopsis about what this book is about, it's actually told through two different points of view. One woman who has, whose sister has drowned in the pool in their family's house's backyard, she doesn't live there, so she has to go and see why she mm-hmm. died. The other point of view is in the past, like in the 1920s or something like that, I want to say, about a couple who travels to a spring, like a health spa, to go spend a little family vacation after she, maybe her honeymoon, I don't remember. No, it's actually, they went there because they were trying to conceive a child and had difficulty, so they went there to try and relax. Oh, to relax. That's right. And but, also to take in, because this this place was supposed to have healing waters and to grant wishes. Right, like a hell spring. So yeah. we won't tell you how these two stories connect because it's actually very, very cool, I think, mm-hmm. how it connects. But that is the basic premise of the book. Yeah. And I really, I enjoyed, it was very haunting. Mm-hmm. It was... Also kind of soothing in a way. <laughs> yeah. I and I did that. listen to this by audiobook. I did too. So it was, uh, I liked the two, because they did have two different narrators mm-hmm. for the different time periods. So you knew exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm. They do kind of make you sit there and think, is this all in these characters' heads? Or right. is this real? And if it's real, what does it really mean? Stuff like that. It's. It, I thought it was really good. I think it's the first time that I've read Jennifer McMahon, and it will not be the last. I do have The Winter People on my shelf, and if I like that, then I want to think I want to get The Uninvited is the one I want to get after that. I really have enjoyed this author a lot. Then there's The Cousins by Karen McManus. Yes, this is actually a 4.5 star, so it'll fit right in there. Yeah. Okay. The Cousins is a story of four grandchildren. Is it three? Yes, it's three. It's three. That's right. So that was one of the things that got me confused about this book, is that there's one grandmother, four children, three grandchildren. You got it? All right. So the three grandchildren go to work at the resort, But it's really funky because their grandmother has basically cut the family off for basically the entire childhood of these grandchildren. And then all of a sudden she wants to meet them. And they're like, why? And it's also told, and this is what I think also messed me up, is from the point of view of one of the daughters of the grandmother. So you kind of see what happens in the past Mm -hmm. that maybe made the grandmother cut them off. And then the present 
each of the three point of views yeah. of the grandchildren. Yes. I didn't really care that much about the quote-unquote mother's perspective Mm -hmm. because yeah it kind of explains some of the things that were going on in the past that may have caused the cutoff and when they got cut off it was with a simple letter of you know what you did yeah without really explaining and all all these children are like we don't know what we did right (laughs) <laughs> I actually really like this book a lot, hence why I gave it 4.5 stars. I thought it was a really interesting mystery. The twist at the end got me. Didn't see it coming, really. Yeah. Um, up and Like, it was one of those things where, like, you get to a certain point and it's inevitable that you're going to see it coming because you followed the journey. Mm-hmm. And that's what it did for me. It wasn't one of those that I caught it early on and was like, oh, this is going to happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> I did not. How about you? Me either. I really didn't fully see it coming until it was time to so that was that was good Mm -hmm. it also was not all that high tension of a story it felt a lot more like a teenage drama story that hey by the way there's a mystery hiding here enjoy it yes exactly and i went along with this ride yeah it was great i loved it I know the next one you're going to talk about (laughs) yeah uh, is actually my favorite book from last month. So go ahead. I'm going to let you take it away. Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. And this one is by Jessica Townsend. I have not read anything by her before mm-hmm. that I know of. But this is the story of a girl who was born during Eventide. And all the children in this universe that are born during Eventide will only live for 12 years, after which point they die. No one knows really why, but they're also cursed. And every misfortune that happens in the town gets blamed on her, even though it's very, very, very obvious that it's another person's stupidity that causes it. The night that she is supposed to die and her family are being total jerks to her, totally treating her horribly, like this is a Dursley kind of place, Mm -hmm. only they're doing it to their own daughter. Mm -hmm. This guy shows up and he's like, hey, how would you like to not be a part of this anymore (laughs) come and be in this amazing magical hotel with me and join the adventurers club it's not really the adventurers club it's called the wonder society but yeah it's the adventurers club and i love that this was a really good harry potter-esque story i really enjoyed the environment the only thing that kind of didn't do it for me and it will do it for its intended audience because this is much more of a middle grade book, Mm -hmm. is that this was a book that had whimsy by constant motion. Mm -hmm. It made it feel like everything was bright and fantastical because you never stopped very long to look at anything. Right, and there are three more books. I think there's one, one is coming out this fall or maybe at the beginning of next year, I can't remember, but there are three more books, so... That is cool, too. I want to see how it expands the world. I did like that. I enjoyed her character as well as a couple of the other major characters going on in this book. They were kind of fun. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some more of them. And I'd kind of like to know what the villain's actual motivations are because I don't think they are what we think they are. Right, exactly. Yeah. What other four stars do you have? Well, there is Sabriel by Garth Nix. This has been sitting on my TBR shelf for probably about 10 years. <laughs> 10 years, really? Uh, it was given to me by our old roommate, Vince, yes. But it's about this world where necromancy is kind of... It focuses on Sabriel, who is what's called an abortion, which is a form of necromancer that puts the dead back in the grave. And her dad went missing. They think he might be dead. And, oh, All of the dead are coming back right now to try and kill everybody. So she has to go on this amazing journey to get her dad back and blah, 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 blah. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was a good action-y fantasy story with magic. And that, I think, takes care of my four stars. But then you got 4.5 stars. Well, I haven't even done my four stars yet. Oh, I thought you... So I will just do all my four and 4.5 stars together. 
Um, my first one is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is the first in a Scholomance series. I do have number two from NetGalley because it's not out yet. But I wanted to read the first one, obviously. I really thought this was an interesting book because the world that it's written in is like constantly inundated with monsters. If you are squeamish about things like little creepy crawlies that could come out and get you at any time, you probably don't want to read this book because it kind of creeped me out a little bit. But basically these people are thrown into a school in order to learn how to take care of the monsters in the world. You may not make it through the four years and graduation basically consists of you clearing out the basement of all the monsters. If you can get out, then you're good. Wow. That is a simplified version of what's happening here. But I really liked the universe. I really liked the world. I, I was intrigued by the relationships and the diversity in the cast. So I, I I really liked it. I think Marshall should try to get it on audiobook. I, too, I, I have I think... a hold on it for the audiobook. Uh -huh. But I'm going to ask, would you mind if I kept the physical book on my shelf? Because apparently it's got some really good illustrations. Yeah, it does have some like good pictures in it. Yeah, go. I'm interested to see if the audiobook does have that in the notes as well. But we'll yeah. see. Next, I have If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. Julie Murphy also has written like Pumpkin, if you guys, or Dumplin' and Pudding, which are, well, I think one of them is on Netflix. So if you're familiar with that, this is about a modern day Cinderella retelling, which was clever and fantastic. And she is a fashion student at Parsons. She graduates, goes to live with her stepmother and stepsisters who do not hate her, which was awesome. And her stepmother is a producer on one of those dating shows. So on a lark so that she can promote her business, she primarily focuses on shoes, creating Obviously. shoes. Okay, get it? So she goes on this dating show. And I'm not going to tell you about everything else that happens, but it is so cute. And I thought, again, the Cinderella references, amazing. I love these dating show ones. It reminded me a lot of One to Watch, but I actually liked it more than One to Watch. So if you're interested in that, definitely cute. I read nine graphic novels, and here they are. They are the Babysitter's Club graphic novels. Loved them. Gave them four stars. They were so close to the original book, I felt like I was reading the book. And the pictures were... Adorable. So cute. Okay, I actually, other than the fact that they take care of children when their parents are gone, I have no idea what Babysitter's Club is actually about. Well, that's the basic premise, yes. Okay. There are things that happen. Christy's mom is divorced and is dating this super rich guy in another neighborhood, and she's kind of miffed about that. One of the other girls parents so i think her mom has died and her dad starts dating the mom of the of a new girl that comes to town because they were like high school sweethearts before oh. stuff like that happens in it outside of it maybe it's that there one of them has diabetes and she's kind of trying to deal with that okay one of them's grandmother has a stroke so like each book focuses on a different girl one of them they go on vacation to new jersey like with a bunch of kids Oh, wow. So, like, there's three of them. Yeah, there's three of them that are taking care of the kids. And then there's, like, this family of, like, eight kids that all go. So that's their job. So it's a, that kind of thing. Gotcha. It's just fun. It's fun and whimsical, but very short reads. Like, we're talking under 200 pages, which is why my page count is not high <laughs> this month. Mm -hmm. The next two books are ones that Marshall has actually read. The first one is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I thought this book was fun creepy and a little bit gross yeah uh, <laughs> yeah that's a good way of putting the 80s it. references were fantastic i just i i don't know i thought it was well written but it wasn't really like my cup of tea but i was like sure i don't really care i think it's the, okay those christian strongmen that show right. up later in the book they <laughs> took me right back to some of the shows that happened at our old elementary school right and i think that's why i connected to it like in that manner because in the 80s it was all about like oh yeah dungeons and dragons was like from the devil and <laughs> like what <laughs> yeah i remember these days yeah. the next book is the anatomy of desire by lr dorn you also listen to this book because we got it from libro yeah. It is kind of like listening to a true crime podcast and court case about 
a murder that happens in a lake, although you don't you don't know if it's a murder. It could be a murder. It could be an accident mm-hmm. where one of the girls drowns. And you're kind of going through this whole scenario of what happened. He said, she said, and yeah. et cetera. And a lot of this is the court case. Right. Almost all of it is the court case. And I'm going to be honest, this is not a badly written book. It right. is a well-written story. And I would definitely recommend the audiobook version of it because right. it's got a full cast and they all do a great job. I just don't think court cases are really my thing. Right. I wasn't really interested in that part either. I was more interested in the outcome. There is something at the end that happens that I was like, wait, what? Let me uh, rewind, rewind. Did that really, what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that happened. But I mean, overall, it was a solid one time entertaining listen, I think, for me. Yeah. Yeah. And my last, which would be 4.5, is The Plot by Jean Hanf Corlitz. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. It's a long name. The Plot was first described to me by Gabby from Gabby Reads, and it was one of her anticipated books. I had never heard about it. And it's the story of like a professor who has written like a one hit wonder, but can't write anything else, has writer's block, starts to teach at this writer's retreat. And one of his students tells him, I have this plot of this book. It's it's a can't miss. It's going to be an instant bestseller. He's really cocky about it too. So the professor's like, yeah, whatever. So then during a one-on-one session, he starts talking to him. The guy's like, I don't really want to tell anybody because it's good. Anyone can write this book. It, it will be a bestseller. Like, it doesn't matter. You could be yeah. a bad writer and write the story. It doesn't matter. But he does end up telling it to the professor. So, like, five or six years down the line, he is thinking about this story and this guy and finds out that this guy is dead. I can't remember if it's nefarious or anything. It doesn't really matter. So he ends up writing the story. And someone knows Mm. that he took the story from the other person. Oh, this book, much in the way of The Cousins, the twist at the end, I did not see coming. You're kind of just going around the story like, oh, how is he going to get out of this situation? Like, is, is this person going to, like, murder him? Or, like, it, or what, like, what is it? Like, starts getting, like, more and more intense. Or, yeah, are they just going to ruin their reputation? I don't know. But, wow, when you get to the end of this book, whew, it is. Wow. I gave it a 4.5 because there was parts in the middle where I was just kind of like, I get it. I get it. I get it. You know? Gotcha. He's in danger. We get it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. I would I would recommend it. I think it was, it was quite, quite good. Okay. So five stars. Well, I've got six of them. Three of them are comics. And I'm just going to tell you, one of them is a Doctor Strange way of the weird, which was fun just because you get to see things from Doctor Strange's perspective as he's got a new assistant and she's dealing with this. Justice League Dark Lords of Order is the same plot as Doctor Fate Volume 2. That got a two star, but actually written well. (laughs) And I really loved it. So that just brings us to the last of those comics, Heroes in Crisis, which was amazing. This is the story of the Justice League who has created a support group for heroes with PTSD which is necessary because one of these guys, right before he became a hero, found his girlfriend dead in his refrigerator. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's just one of the traumas that these people deal with on a regular basis. And the story actually starts up as everyone in the support group gets killed. Who did it? Why did it happen? Okay, cool. So now we can move on to the actual books. And one of them is one that you have read before, The One. By John the one, Wise. exactly. It's been a while, but yes. Okay, so the one is the story of a dating app. Not really a dating app. It is a genetics test where it will find the one person elsewhere in the world that is your perfect genetic match, that the two of you will just get each other, you will love each other unconditionally, no matter what. And you see a whole bunch of different stories that this app touches. Some of them are extremely compelling. I don't want to tell you all oh. these different stories, but they are very compelling. And the truth of some other 
things about this app touches other ones in different ways. Mm -hmm. So first off, you're going to see that somebody made a TV show out of it. Don't watch it. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm just saying if you've read this book and then tried to watch the TV show, you're going to be really disappointed. Whereas if you watch the TV show and then read the book, you might be like, holy crap. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it depends. <laughs> yes. My first five star is The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gould. This is the story of a girl whose fathers are on a paranormal show, like a TV show. But things have always been kind of funky between her and one of her fathers ever since this one TV episode that they try to bring her on, something happened. The hometown of the fathers has had, again, people disappearing. Do you see the uh, yeah. the commonality here? People are disappearing and or turning up dead. So the fathers decide they're going to go back to their hometown to do paranormal, like a TV episode around the town. And the daughter comes to. There, it is a your basic small town, narrow-minded, gay dads, ethnic, not great. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Like the narrow mindedness of a small town and the way that they are treated. But there is something very creepy happening and you can feel it. She can feel it the moment she steps into the town. Mm -hmm. There is something in the air and it is kind of a ghost story. It's kind of a sinister little horror story. And the way it's written is beautiful. The relationships in this book are deep complex. Uh, I, I cannot say enough good things about this book. This was a good surprise to me. I did not expect it to be as good as I thought it was going to be. I recommend you read it because I think, Marshall, you will like it. Sounds good, actually. My next five-star book is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Hey, that's on my five-star list, too. Hey, let's talk about let's this. Let's talk about it. This was obviously one of our most highly anticipated is Riley Sager is definitely one of our favorite thriller horn authors mm -hmm. and while i gave it a five star it is not my favorite of his correct which is home before dark but that's i think for personal reasons actually but anyway this is the story of a girl who wants to go home from college because she has suffered a trauma and she can't really hack it at college anymore so she wants to leave so she goes to like one of those ride sharing boards and finds a ride home. Now, th this is a, an era before Uber. This was like in the 90s. This is before cell phones yep. were really that prevalent. So yes, there was an era, children, where you would have a piece of paper with your phone number on it yeah. to, to get somebody to give you a ride. Yeah, which in the era we're in right now sounds like very suspect. But back in the 90s, it was like... Very trustworthy. No wonder there were so many serial killers all over the place. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so she gets in the car and starts to suspect that maybe the guy driving her is a serial killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Like I said, I didn't like this as much as Home Before Dark because there were parts in the middle that just seemed lackluster to me. I, I, I enjoyed them. I thought the references were yeah. super fun. I liked the ending. I thought the way it came together was great. There is one mechanic in this book that is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And that is that the main character, when she's under extreme duress, she starts to see the world around her like a movie. Everything actually gets a little crisper and a little clearer, but she also starts to hallucinate as if things are in a movie, mm -hmm. uh, specific movies even. So she's she never sure if she's like dreaming or if it's real life, which I think is great because it's a very unreliable narrator. So you never know what she's really seeing and what she's not seeing. Yes. And how it relates to the mystery as a whole, mm -hmm. how it relates to all of what's going on was really good. Mm -hmm. And I did not see the true ending coming. Right, I didn't either. I also thought that the true ending actually took all the little things that were like annoying me throughout the book and it went, by the way, that's there for a reason. Which is why this is a five star even yes. though. Yes. I mean, I know a lot of people right now are like hating on this book, but I think if they really step back and look at the writing mechanics of this book, I think that that is a completely different story. Like enjoyment, yes. 
comparison to the other books that he has written, I get it. I get why they're hating on it. Because yeah. there's there was a lot of excitement and anticipation around this book, but it's still a good book. Yeah. One I will keep on my shelf. Yes. yes. I want to bring you to my absolute favorite book of the month. Great. Not from book of the month. But book you read but this month. book that I read this month. And that is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. I'm going to tell you, this is also on my holds shelf on Libby. And I will be interested to understand if you like the audio in the way that it's written. I have had people tell me that their reading of the audio book has kind of turned them off. I did not listen to the audio book and I loved this book in the way that it was written. So I don't know if there's going to be a difference between okay. the two. It is the story of a family that moves back into the grandfather's house. The grandfather was a completely abusive, both mentally and physical person, which is why the dad moved out of the house. And he comes back to the house when the grandfather is on his deathbed. And he says, I want to leave you the house. And the dad's like, no. I do not want to live in this house. And he goes, well, if you don't buy this house for a dollar, I will leave it to you and you have to pay all the royalty taxes and everything, right? So he's like, fine. So he ends up moving and then creepy things start happening in this town. We're also following a serial killer kind of person who the grandfather was there when he was electrocuted, like in the past. So it's kind of a past present situation but it's also not and i can't give away why it's not all of these different storylines are like colliding with each other and the chapters are super short like we're talking there are one and two page chapters in this book that's why we do not be i mean yes it's a big book it's under 600 pages i think it's like 544 and you're gonna look at the amount of chapters and be like oh holy crap Don't let that phase you, small chapters. But the writing style of this book was lyrical and there are a lot of gross things. Okay. Not as gross as like My Best Friend's Exorcism, but there are some gross things that happen in this. Oh, I just, I I recommend it if you're a fan of horror books because it is so well written. (laughs) I can't get over it. It just stays with you. Yeah. Mm. So my last five star was my favorite book this month. This is by Andy Weir, the guy who did The Martian and uh, Artemis. Mm -hmm. It is Project Hail Mary. Now- Which is book of the month. Which is book of the month, (laughs) yes. And so this was described to me by different people as a mystery in space. And while there is a puzzle to be solved, and it is in space. This is not a mystery book. This is straight up science fiction. And you know, there's different groups of science fiction. There's soft science fiction, like Star Trek, where it's really just fantasy in metal. And it's more accessible. It's, it's accessible. Mm-hmm. Then you have hard science fiction. This is where they focus on theoretical physics and stuff like that. This is like Bose-Einstein condensate science fiction. <laughs> That's and if you got that joke, then you want this book. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> okay, so this is the story of a guy who wakes up in a spaceship, and well, there was supposed to be two other people there. They've been dead for a very long time, and he doesn't remember who he is. And the only door to the control room is unlocked by him telling the computer his own name that he can't remember. What the heck? Yeah. So you then get all of his flashbacks and you're actually getting the flashbacks as he's remembering the story of the past. And as it turns out, there is a microbe eating the sun. Okay. And they found one other star system where this same microbe is there, but it's not eating the sun. So he was sent along with two other people to go figure out why. We have like 30, 40 years before everybody's dead. This sounds like a dire situation. It was fun. It was cute. It was hilarious. And oh my goodness, the science. He does actually consult with other scientists and people like that to try and figure things out. But I'm really wanting to see a movie of this. I hope so. Because I think I'd enjoy it a lot more than reading the book. You would. Because I like The Martian. 
Yeah, you, I don't, I think you might get bored by all the science that's mm -hmm. going on in here and all the math that he does and math experiments. Right. But when you put this into a movie, it's amazing. I mean, to qualify this, I spend most of my day, my day job is looking at numbers and mm -hmm. things like that. When I read a book, I don't want to have to think exactly. about it. I just want an experience. So that is not my type of book, really. And that's my last book for the month. Yay, we got all the way through it. I will also say that I have started doing some TikToks. So if you want to see some more book related stuff, you should get on Ooh. my TikTok at Zany Laney. I'm on there. So yeah. Okay. That's a whole new thing. But thank you for listening to this. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for in a couple of weeks. We'll have maybe the Spinnerack Kids about magic. Mm -hmm. magic, magic comic books. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Lainey or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.